Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the Silverstone Fortress FT-05. Now usually at the end of the year, Silverstone release new instalments to both their Fortress and their Raven series. And in this fifth instalment here today, we've got a completely fresh new design. Now the Fortress cases are synonymous with being rather quirky in their visual appearance. But on the surface, this uh, FT-05 actually looks quite ordinary. But when we look at it in a bit more detail, you couldn't be further away from the truth. FT-05 utilizes a rotated motherboard tray, which completely transforms the internal layout and the cooling methodology. Throughout this case, there are signs of innovation, which will certainly come in handy for both the system builder and the enthusiast. Now, FT-05 can be bought in the UK for around £140. In America, you're looking at around $180. This is quite a price drop when you compare it to its predecessor over at launch. Now, uh, as we go into our video today, we're going to be revealing all of the features to see how this fifth edition really shapes up. Okay, so to begin, we're going to start at the front of the case. And here we've got an aluminium panel, which is completely sealed off. So there's no ventilation. And uh, really, the only distinguishing features here are the two accents, which run from the top all the way down to the bottom. And this reflective strip, which features an LED Silverstone logo. And that requires a SATA connection from your power supply. You'll also notice that we've got allocation for a slot loading optical drive. So since uh, DVDs, CD drives are rarely used nowadays, Silverstone has completely done away with the five and a quarter support in favor of the smaller form factor, as this means that they can utilize the space instead. Up at the top of the case, we have the front panel connectivity. You can see here we've got this cover, which is actually spring loaded. If we press the back of it, it pops open like this. Over on the left and the right hand side, we have the power and the reset buttons. But if we just open that back up, we've got uh, two USB free ports. We've got a headphone and a microphone jack. And then we've got this fan controller here. So inside FT-05, we have two cooling fans. And we can control the speed of these from this fan controller here. So we've got the low setting, which is 600 RPM. We've got mid, which is at 900 RPM. And then we've got the high setting, which is 1200 RPM. Now further back from those ports at the front there, we have this plastic cover, this plastic fascia, which is heavily ventilated. And then you can actually remove this. All you need to do is slide it back and it pops out like that. As you can see, that is a plastic cover. So removing that, highlights uh, that the motherboard tray is actually rotated in typical Fortress series fashion. So you can see we've got the uh, graphics card ports at the top here. We've also got the uh, motherboard rear I.O. panel. So all of your ports are up here as well. We've got these two handles for easy transportation. And just in case you're wondering how you're going to get all your cables in with that uh, panel already fixed into place, there is a cutout here just by the power supply which allows you to feed all of your cables in at the rear of the case. Okay, next up we've got these side panels which are identical on either side. And as you can see, completely solid. There's no uh, real distinguishing features. They're closed off. The only real thing to talk about here is this reflective strip which runs from the front to the back and that uh, coordinates with the front of the case uh, with the same styling. Now the significant difference with this uh, side panel system on the FT-05 is the way that you get the side panels on and off the chassis. So to do this, you've got to take off the top panel. And once that's off, we've got this latch system, which is uh, just on the inside of the panel, as you can see there. So this is a two-fold feature. So uh, first of all, it's really handy. It's useful to have. You haven't got to mess about with screws. Uh, but the second thing is that if you're going to be taking this case to a LAN party, it offers you a level of protection. So people don't know how to get inside the case and uh, you know, it just gives you a little bit of protection against theft. So to get these off, all you've got to do is uh, press the latch in and it takes uh, quite a bit of force. You've just got to give it a good pull. And there we've got the side panel. You can see there we've got the protective foam uh, for the noise damping. So FT-05 takes a maximum form factor of ATX. So we've got our ATX test system already installed inside the case. And you can see there that, that motherboard tray has been rotated so that the components are on a 90 degree angle. And here is a view behind the motherboard tray on the alternate side. And we're now going to move in and take a close look at all the features inside FT-05. 
Okay, so the power supply sits at the back of the case and it's positioned in a standing orientation with the cooling fan facing the rear. And so it's actually able to pull in plenty of air compared to a traditional case, for example, which relies upon the gap at the very bottom of the case. And just a note about the size of the power supply, anything over 160 millimeter is gonna cause issues as there is a hard drive caddy just below it. Also at the top, we've got a series of seven PCI covers which all have the ventilation, but oddly use a standard screw to fix them into place. Silverstein also include a cage which fits over this entire section. And further along, we've got a fan grill which has the mounting holes to fit a 120mm cooling fan. Moving on, we come to the hard drive caddy, which as I said is sitting below that power supply and this is a plastic enclosure. It can take two 3.5 inch drives and there's a series of screws at the front and the back so we can completely remove this caddy out of the case. So if you're going to be wanting to swap out these fans here at the bottom in aid of perhaps dropping in a radiator, which we're going to show later in the video, then you're going to need to take that caddy out. Now to install a drive, it's a case of simply sliding it into place like this and uh, there are mounting holes uh, in case you are not too confident in uh, just leaving it like this. I mean it does offer some reasonable fixture but uh, there are the mounting holes there just to give it a nice secure fitment. And speaking of those cooling fans we can reveal that they are indeed air penetrators which are 180 millimeter. As you can see these fans are colossal in size and are actually configured to deliver positive pressure, taking cooler across the system. Now both fans can be plugged into the fan controller to offer 600, 900 or 1200 RPM. And we all know that these fans are renowned for offering exceptional performance and low noise. They're ideal in this scenario. Under these fans we have a cavity which allows the air to be pulled into the case. And this area has a layer of noise reduction foam and underneath those fans, there is a large magnetic dust filter which can be detached and cleaned. Now behind the motherboard tray, we've obviously got the cables neatly arranged and we've got that slot loading optical drive bay. But uh, Silverstone have actually cleverly engineered another feature. So we've got these two brackets here. One is uh, concealed by these cables, but the bracket here offers support for two and a half inch drives. So we're talking SSDs and I've got one here. All you've got to do is simply slot it into the bracket like that and that's actually a quite a nice fitment there but again we've got the mounting holes if you're wanting to drop in screws for a tighter fitment. Now the clearance options are something which are essential for any of you system builders out there as it helps to establish what kit will fit inside this case. So for the CPU cooler as you can see things are extremely tight for our Noctua NHU12P. This cooler is 158 millimeters in height, so there is a tiny amount of space there to possibly fit a 160 millimeter cooler, and that would include something like a Noctua NHD14 or the Thermalrite Silver Arrow. And with the graphics card compatibility, there's approximately 300 millimeters for the maximum length, which covers a wide range of high-end options. The card that we're using today is the XFX 7970 Double D Edition. Since there is nothing obstructing the other lanes, adding in more than one card isn't a problem at all. For cable management, we can easily tie away those cables, but since there are multiple indentations on this particular side, there are different measurements to take. But in the main area there, we've got approximately 10 millimeters of clearance, which I'll be honest, can make getting that side panel back on quite tricky. So extra care has got to be taken in order to tuck things away. FT05 is able to house water cooling radiators, but there is just one specific location dedicated for this very purpose at the bottom of the case. Now to gain access to this, we need to remove the bottom plate, and then we need to take out the two large cooling fans. So in this area, we can install 240, 280, and 360 millimeter radiators due to the mounting coils which are supplied, but we do have some restrictions, for example, Oversized 360mm radiators, which are the, uh, the thicker type, the 6mm, will not fit inside this case because the ends protrude beyond the edge of the chassis and they just simply will not squeeze in. Thicker 240mm radiators like this Phobia G Charger that I've got here will fit and we can also drop in the popular Corsair Hydro Series coolers too. But this would obviously be to the disadvantage of having to take out the primary airflow within the case, taking those cooling fans out. 
And just for your reference, there is approximately 10 centimeters from the very bottom of the case to the edge of the board to provide you with enough space for a radiator and fan combo. Right guys, for our final clip, I've got the power cable plugged in. I'm gonna power the system up and uh, basically give you a, a bit of a demo uh, with that fan control. So we've got the air penetrators at the very bottom here. These are the 180 millimeter cooling fans. And with that fan controller up at the front, we can use 600, 900 and 1200 RPM. And this should just give you a bit of an idea as to how loud these case fans are when the system is all powered up. So we hit the power button. So this is 600 RPM. That was 900 RPM, and we're now going to go up to 1200 RPM. So that is the new Fortress FT-05. Some of you may have recognised the internal layout on this case because it shares the same chassis as the new Raven 5 Silverstone have actually just modified the external design here to give it that premium touch. Now the styling on FT-05 is certainly quite toned down, it's subtle and very minimalist. I'm not sure what you guys think but perhaps it's a little bit too plain. I was actually a big fan of the FT-03 because it was such a fun and unique design. But regardless of this, when we delve inside the case, there is uh, plenty of interesting elements to make use of. I really like the fact that we've got that side panel latch system up at the top, and the fact that they've done away with full-sized optical drive bays in favour of the slot loading bay instead. Uh, you know, I don't know many people that actually use an optical drive anymore. I don't use one myself, so on my part, that's a great feature to have. So the inclusion also of those cooling fans at the bottom there, the air penetrators and the fact that we can modify the speed is again a great feature to have. So as always guys, I'm going to leave the full review for this in the description. It's got a bit more detail over there with the cooling performance graphs. So thanks very much for taking the time out to watch this video today. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.